Okay guys, so we'll have the second discussion for the laboratory part. Um, so for today, we'll have an introduction to specimen collection, handling, and preservations. So going back, we have two classifications of parasite according to its location. So we have the ectoparasite as well as the endoparasite. Okay, so for ectoparasite, they live on the exterior part of the body on the skin and in the hair and are said to cause infestations. They may also function as vector or organism that transmit disease into the human body. So examples here, we have here the Amblyoma americanum or the lone star tick fly. This is a human bed bug and the Anopheles mosquito. And based on the definition, uh, so, not only anopheles but as well as other type of mosquito because they are vectors that transmit diseases. Aside from that, mosquito also um, are, well, of course, parasitic because they harm us while well, they are benefited because they suck blood from our body. Okay, so for endoparasite is our parasite that live within the Oh, so we have here trophozoite or entamoeba histolytica, so an ascaris egg, so as well as the dipolobotrium latum, which causes metalloblastic anemia because of vitamin B12, um, because it causes vitamin B12 deficiency because it feeds on it. Okay, so nakikipagkumpit siya sa katawan for the vitamin B12 kasi nga kinakain niya. Okay, so... Protozoa, of course, uh, we have the amoeba, ciliates, flagellates, and protozoan. What is the only parasitic um, ciliata, guys? So, we have the Balantigium coli, okay? So, as well as helminths, wait lang. Okay, so we continue. As well, um, intestinal and atrial or body cavity parasites, as well as blood and tissue parasites. Parasite. So, what are examples of blood parasites? We have, of course, the Plasmodium and Babesha. Okay, as well as Trypanosomas. Okay, for tissue parasite, we have the Trichinella spiralis. Okay. Okay, so nandito na lang na si Ascaris lumbricoides. Take note, guys, that we also have what is uh, we have the unholy trinity in parasitology. When you say an, an unholy trinity, we refer to HAT, H-A-T, okay? So those are the parasites that are referred as the unholy trinity parasites. So HAT, H for hookworm, A for Ascaris lumbricoides, and T for trichuris trichura. So unholy trinity, it indicates that it is a common for a child to be infected with all of the Three parasites. So, imagine nyo na lang yung, bat, yung isang bata na at the same time infected with the three parasite. Okay? So, that's why they are referred as the unholy trinity. Okay. So, we have a uh, stool or fecal sample which is the most common, uh, commonly requested sample for parasitic examination. Okay? So, the most common method of diagnosis of intestinal parasites is through the demonstrations of eggs, larvae, adults, trophozoite, cysts, or oocyst in the stool. So, the fecal specimen is best collected in clean, white mounted containers made of wax, cardboard, or plastic with tight fitting lid. Okay? So, Tight fitting. Why must be the container first will be tight fitting? Okay. Aside from the fact na dapat hindi matapon yung stool, okay, that is to ensure retention of moisture to prevent to prevent desiccation or drying and to prevent accidental spillage of the sample. Okay. So, those are the main reasons on why it must be, um, it must have a tight fitting lid. Actually, this one, it is not a uh, wide, mounted, it should be mounted, 
Okay, malaki yung bunganga niya. Okay, kumbaga malaki, maluwag yung um, yung taas na part. However, this kasi guys, okay, so yung malalaki, yung wide-mouthed containers kasi, um, the purpose of that is um, mas madaling tumae, okay, dun sa, dun sa container na yun. However, we do not use that anymore because we have this even if it's not white mounted um, container as long as it has the spoon okay kasi yun lang yung kunin mo so pea size sample of stool only hindi kagaya kapag sobrang malaki ibibigay mong ano ibibigay mong container dun na sila mismo tatae so punong puno na yun pag sir sir one to your container and it taki okay so in reality guys if you work in the laboratory, you will encounter a lot of a situation related to um, stool samples that are submitted in a very large container. Lalagay nila yan sa mayonnaise, yung bote ng mayonnaise, yung buong tain nila ilalagay nila doon. Okay? So, you instruct the patient, okay? Kapag iti-take home nila yung, ano, yung requisition, tas magsasubmit sila kinabukasan, you have to instruct them that you only need a pea size. Okay? Ganun po yung pea size. Yung parang talagang green peas, ganun lang yung size ng tayo na kailangan mo for laboratory examination. Okay? Sa, uh, when we are referring to stool sample for parasitology examination. Okay? So, ganun lang po siya. Okay, we proceed with the next slide. So, we have here, for stool materials to be used in parasitic diagnosis, there are important factors to be considered. Okay, so, we have there um, intake of drugs as well as medicinal substances. Okay, so, all of this must be considered. Okay, so, um, antidiarrheals, antacids, bismuth, barium, and laxatives. So, if a patient has ingested any of this type of um, drug, stool sample should be collected after, okay, a week after the last intake. So, dapat kapag nakapag-take siya ng mga any of this, one week muna, okay, pag mag-stop muna siya, or kung hindi naman pwede i-stop, the last day ng pag-take niya ng gamot, yun yung counting. So, that, dapat one week from the last intake, dun siya pwede mag-submit ng stool sample. Okay? So, nakukuha ba? So, bismuth, guys, it causes the blackening of the stool. So, that would inhibit um, examination kasi nagiging black mo stool mo. Walang makikita. Okay? So, all of these drugs, guys, um, have been found to cause crystalline residues, okay, which could interfere the ID of parasites. So, ibig sabihin, itong mga drugs na to, okay, so all of them, they can cause the production of this one, crystalline residues in the stool sample. And what is the effect of these crystalline residues in the stool sample? Okay, they may cause the, um, a false diagnosis. Okay? Or false identification of parasite. Because you may identify them as parasites even if hindi naman. Okay? So, possible na magkaroon ng false positive kapag binasa mo nang nagtitake sila ng ganito. Aside from that, kapag sobrang dami naman, baka hindi mo makita or mapansin yung mga parasites. Okay? So, false negative. That's why it's better that um, patients taking this must submit their samples one week after their last intake of the drug. Okay? Intake, intake of antibiotics usually decreases the number of protozoans for several weeks. So, in that case, it will cause a false low levels of parasite. Okay? So, amount of stool to be collected is dictated by the techniques which will be used. Okay? So, kapag routine examination, usually pea size, okay, yung parang sobrang liit lang yung green piece na size, yan lang siya kaliit, or thumb size na specimen of stool, okay, if that is formed. But, in case that is watery, 
So, 5 to 6 tablespoon is recommended. Ma'am, kailangan pa bang i-measure ng mga pasyente? Kailangan 5 to 6? Not necessarily. Okay? As long as it's like an approximate value. Okay? So, yung 5 to 6 na tablespoon of watery stool. Contamination with toilet paper, urine, and soil must be prevented since this can destroy protozoan trophozoids. Okay, so take note guys that um, the stool sample must be free from toilet water, urine, and soil. Okay, so aside from the fact that um, urine and the toilet water may destroy trophozoan parasite. Okay, pwede silang masira. Okay, pwede ma-break yung mga trophozoan parasite. And yung soil naman, soil, um, there are a lot of free living um, organism in the soil which may lead to what? Uh, misidentification. Okay, so akala mo parasite siya, pero free living lang pala. Okay? So, avoid contamination of those. Okay? So, age of the stool sample is very important for the urine specimen since the trophozoids it may contain are likely to die within 30 minutes to 1 hour after passage. So, as much as possible, if that is um, diarrhea or watery stool, you have to examine them immediately, okay, or within 30 to 1 hour para naman hindi masira yung trophozoids if there are so that you can correctly identify its presence, okay? So, trophozoids also, guys, they are killed by refrigeration, okay? So, namamatay ang trophozoids kapag nire-ref yung sample, okay? So, aside from that, helminth eggs and protozoan cysts are not damaged by refrigeration. Okay? So, yung mga trophozoids talaga ang may problema in specimen handling and transport. Okay? As well as in examination. Mas madali silang masira as compared kay cyst. Okay, delay in examination of specimen may require preservation to ensure that parasites are present in the identifiable stage. Okay? So, you can use preservatives because there are different preservatives. So, we'll discuss those later. Okay, and the later part of our discussion. Temporary storage of fecal samples in the refrigerator. But then again, guys, that is just temporary. And take, take note that refrigeration may destroy trophozoan parasites. So, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius is acceptable. But prolonged refrigeration can bring about desiccation. What do you mean by desiccation, guys? So, drying. So, madadry yung sample kapag matagal na na ref. Never freeze stool samples and never keep them in incubators also. Okay, so we, we introduced the different stool preservatives. Appropriate fixation of parasites in the stool will preserve protozoan morphological features and prevent possible destruction of helminth eggs and larvae. Stool samples must be adequately mixed with the selected preservatives in a proportion of one part of stool to three parts of preservative. So, one is to ten. So, there are several stool preservatives but only the more common ones will be discussed. Okay? So, when selecting a fixative, the possibility of preparing a permanently stained slide must also be considered. Okay? So, if you want to um, keep a sample for instructional purposes, okay, nakakita ka ng cyst, okay, gusto mong ipreserve yan ng mas matagal or gusto mong ilagay sa slide para makita ng may sudyante mo, you have to consider the choice of fixative that you will use also. So we have formalin. Okay, so formalin. So any of the following stool preservatives can be used. So let's start with formalin. It is 
an all-purpose fixative si formalin. So it preserves uh, preserves tool can be concentrated also using the FEC technique kapag ginamitan mo siya ng fixative na formalin. A 5% concentration is recommended for protozoan cysts while 10% concentration is recommended for helminth eggs and larvae. So the solution may be buffered with sodium phosphate to preserve the morphological characteristic of the organism. So, scouding solution that is used to preserve fresh stool in, proper, in preparation for staining the stool smears, it also contains mercury chloride. So, this is one of the disadvantages of scouding solution, guys, because the mercury chloride is highly toxic to humans, okay? So, the PVA, this is a plastic resin which serves to adhere a stool sample on the slide. It is normally incorporated into a scouding solution. Therefore, the actual fixation is done by the scouding solution. The main advantage of using PVA is related to the preservation of protozoan cysts and trophozoids for permanent staining. Okay? So, same with formalin, stools preserved in polyvinyl alcohol can be concentrated using the FECT. And what is FECT again? That is the formalin ether concentration technique. Okay? And using PVA, it can be shipped to any laboratory for further examination. Okay? So, if it has an, if, if it undergo the FECT concentration, pa din. Okay? So, the MIF, the methylate iodine formalin. It is useful for the fixation of intestinal protozoan, helminth eggs, and larvae. So the local's iodine component should always be freshly prepared since it is unstable. Okay? So guys, wait lang. I think I forgot something. So the methylate and iodine, guys, these are the staining components. Okay, so the methylate and iodine, these are the staining components and the formalin that is the preservative of PMIF. Okay, let's proceed to slide 15. So, sodium acetate, acetic acid formalin. So, images of organisms fixed in sap, okay, either that is sodium acetate formalin or sodium acetic acid formalin. Okay? However, are not as short after staining compared with those fixed in PVA or scouting fluid. SAF has advantage in that it can be used for permanent stains as well as for direct mounts and concentration procedures. And aside from that, it has it is a liquid fixative with a long shelf life. Hindi kagaya ng gumagamit ng MIF or the methylene iodine formalin that it must be freshly prepared because the local's iodine is unstable. Okay? Aside from this, another advantage of the SAF is that um, it does not have a mercury chloride which is present in both the scoutings and the PDA. Therefore, it does not contain components that are that is highly toxic to humans. Okay, so we go to methods of examination. So, these are just introduction, guys, ha? So, consistency form, semi-form, soft, loose, or watery. Ano dyan yung laging, ano, consistency ng tayo mo? Yung hirap na hirap kang tumatae? Yung medyo hirap? Hindi naman pala. Soft is um, madali lang, di ba? Madaling lumabas, pero buo pa din. And then, you have the loose part. And then, kapag matubig-tubig yung tae, watery. So, in for, in form stool, you expect, you expect cyst. Okay? So, if um, you identify the consistency of the stool as um, form or semi-form, okay? So, most likely, you will isolate cyst form. Okay? So, for loose or watery, Okay, mga diarrheic specimen, you expect protozoan trophozoids. Okay, so helminth eggs and larvae, okay, 
can be found and in any consistency. Okay, regardless if that is form, semi-form, loose, or watery. Pag mga helminth larvae, okay, or egg. Ano ba yung mga helminth na parasites? Okay, ito yung mga worms. Like the hookworm, ascaris, trichuris. So, those are the helminths. Okay? So, color. You also have to identify the color. Okay? Because the color um, can give you a hint also. Okay? So, what in a normal um, faces or in a normal school, what, uh, what is the component that gives its color? Okay? Ano yung nagbibigay sa kanya ng kulay? Okay? So, na-discuss natin yan under bilirubin metabolism, the stercobilin. Okay? The stercobilin. So, color of the stool can be indicative of the presence of parasite. And the presence of blood should always be reported. Okay? Because it may indicate the presence of bleeding. Okay? So, kapag dark-colored blood, actually, uh, minsan, hindi mo naman mapapansin yung dark. Okay? As long as kapag sobrang dark na ng, ng stool mo, okay? Or even if the stool is very dark or the blood is dark-colored, most likely it indicates a high, uh, an upper gastrointestinal bleeding. But if it's fresh, Okay, reddish na reddish yung blood that is present in the stool, possible, uh, mas malaki yung chance that that is a cause of lower gastrointestinal tract bleeding. Unless, di ba, hirap na hirap ka sa pagtae kasi malaki and that is for Possible din naman yun. Magkaroon ng blood kasi nga, sobrang nahihirapan yung individual to collect the stool sample. Blood and mucus in soft water is still most likely you can identify or you will identify trachocytes, particularly in the mucous part. Okay, so kung meron kang mucoidal na stool, stool with mucus, okay, so you get the mucous part, yun yung kunin mo and then you examine that. Okay. So, the following are elements which may be found in stool specimen in addition to parasites. Okay, so, uh, the white blood cells, so they may indicate the presence of inflammation. Eosinophils, which may indicate an immune response to parasitic infection. May guys ha, possible. Okay, possible na it indicates parasitic infection. Okay. So, red blood cells may indicate ulcerative or bleeding. For macrophage, that is, um, its presence in stool uh, may indicate parasitic infection or bacterial infection. Okay? So, charcoal-laden crystals, these are released from the disintegration of eosinophil. Okay? So, galing sila sa eosinophil. Okay? Kasi nasira yung eosinophil, so they are released. So, forming the charcoal-laden crystals. And epithelial cells, which are, of course, from the intestinal tract, which is very rich in epithelial cells. Okay? Okay, eggs of arthropods, plant nematodes, and other spurious parasites may be mistaken for human parasites also. Fungal spores coming from candida species, okay, as well as sa mga yeast, okay, and yeast like fungi may also be mistaken as parasite. So, there, these are causes of interferences in the examination. Elements of plant origin which resemble some parasites this includes, okay, so one, fiber, second, pollen grains, third, vegetable spirals, and starch granules. Again, this may interfere the laboratory examination because they may resemble 
parasites. Okay? Lalong-lalo na yung mga pilog-pilog. Okay? So, in that case, if you are not sure, you can send this sample to the RITM, which is the Reference Laboratory for Microbiology. And animal and plant hairs may look like helminth larvae. Okay? Again, plant and animal hairs, they may look like helminth larvae. Therefore, they can be also uh, referred as interferences in the examination. Okay? So, DFS, we proceed with the techniques for microscopic examination of stool. So, DFS or direct fecal smear, the direct wet mount is one of the most easily performed parasitologic tests, although proper interpretation requires careful examination and experience. Okay, so it takes a lot of experience, okay, for you to um, develop your skill in identification of parasites in using the microscope to full advantage. The test is most useful when fresh specimens, especially liquid stools, or duodenal aspirates are examined for motile, trophozoids, or helminth larvae. Okay, next. So slide 24 na guys, up to 40. Okay, so direct fecal smears or direct wet mount. So we have, under this, we have the saline wet mount. It is used for initial microscopic examination of stool. Okay, uh, stools, it is employed primarily to demonstrate worm eggs, larvae, worm eggs, larvae, protozoan, trophozoites, and cysts. This type of mount can also reveal the presence of red blood cell and WBC. Why is it preferred as saline wet mount? Because we use a saline solution that is um, possible na 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. Okay, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9% of sodium saline solution. Okay, or sodium chloride solution. So, anong gagawin mo sa salt? Pwede kang magtimpla, okay, with 0 0.8 to 0.9%. Okay, timplahin mo yon from a sodium chloride. Okay, um, or aside from that, uh, you can also buy a saline solution. Okay, yung timplado na, meron din naman. Iodine wet mount, it is used mainly to stain the glycogen of the nuclei of cyst if in case present. Okay, so si iodine wet mount, so cyst can usually be specifically identified. So, ano mga ba yung mga may cyst, guys? And mga may glycogen na parasite. So, we discussed this already. Okay, yung first, ay second discussion natin in the lecture. Protozoan parasites, okay, so they have glycogen and nuclei, as well as other parasites, kagaya ng mga charja. Okay? So, si BMB, so it should be prepared each time amoebic trophozoites are seen as a in saline wet mount, okay? But guys, take note that this is, it depends on the laboratory protocol, okay? Kasi merong naman, kapag nakita mo, report mo na agad without performing BMB. Or when their presence is suspected. BMB stain is appropriate only for fresh, unpreserved specimen. Okay, bakit unpreserved guys? Because preservation may destroy trophozoid. Okay? E sila yung gusto mong makita kapag BMB wet mount. Sila ang gusto mong identify or tignan yung characteristic niya. That's why you should not use preserved specimen. Okay? Kasi nga, baka mamatay. Okay? So, hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng BMB for preserved specimen because preservation may kill the Trophozoid. Okay, so materials and reagents. Lang kong siya ng energy. I'm so sorry. I'm really tired. Okay, alam kong kayo din. But we still have to go on and continue, right? So materials and reagents. Okay, so cover slips and others, markers, very important for labeling. Okay, so kung napanood nyo lang naman sa Netflix yung us again. 
si Chain Agnesa and R.K. Bagat Singh. Anong nangyari doon? Ano yung major error ng medtech doon, guys? Okay. So, it was in drug testing. Sila yung nag-label ng... Uh, the medtech was the one who labeled the sample and she did not follow the laboratory protocol kasi pinagsabay niya yung dalawang tao na pinag-collect ng sample. And aside from that, okay, meron kasi yung jowa niya sa lab, so disturbed siya. And then, another thing that she violated is, was that she labeled the specimen. And in fact, in their laboratory protocol, dapat yung tao yung maglilabel ng kanyang specimen. Okay? So, huwag maglandi-landi kapag nasa trabaho. War loop. Okay? So, in direct saline and iodine mouse, of course, you have to label the slide. And you get your sample from a labeled specimen or labeled container. Okay? So, ilalagay mo ba dito? Okay? So, Michael Angelo, okay, ilalagay mo ba yung name ng patient? No, guys. In the laboratory, we use identification numbers. Okay? So, we don't write the name of the patient in the slide. Hindi nangyayari yung ganun. Okay? Unless, wala kayong laboratory protocol and ang ginagamit talaga is name. But it is recommended that samples must have laboratory, unique laboratory identification. Okay? So, you label the microscope slide. What will you use to label? If it has... Um, what will you use to label a slide, guys? If it has a frosted end, you will do use pencil. Okay? So, you will use pencil. Pero kapag, unlike here, kasi wala siyang frosted end, most likely, you use a, ang gagamitin yung ball pen, pencil, okay? Yung my permanent ink, Okay? pen markers na permanent, hindi yung washable. Okay, so you place a drop of saline in the center of the left half of the slide and place a drop of iodine solution naman at the center of the right half. Kung gusto mong pagsabayin, depende kasi yan sa lab, you can use separate slides naman to do this also. One slide for the saline, one slide for the iodine. So depending on the protocol, Okay, so, aside from that, with an applicator stick, okay, in the Philippines, you can use the match, okay, or toothpick. Pick up a small portion of the specimens um, with the size of a match head and mix the drop of saline. Okay, so ilalagay mo dito yung nakuha mong sample and then, so just like here, you will mix it. Okay, you will mix it. So, note that form stool. For form stool, you take the portion of stool from an area to include inside and outside parts of the specimen. Ang ibig sabihin nun. Okay? So, most likely, dapat kumuha ka sa part na labas ng form stool and sa loob. Okay? So, one method that we use in a form stool is that uh, tinutusok namin siya in many areas. Okay? So, tusok-tusokin mo lang yung tae. Saka mo, ilagay dun sa saline or, si, or sa iodine mount. Okay? So, stool with mucos. Okay? Piliin mo yung my mucos. Okay? And then, mix it with the saline. Okay? For loose water stool, pick a small portion of the stool or any part and mix also with the saline. Okay? Ma'am, why is it na sa loose watery and sa mucos, stool with mucos, bakit hindi mo siya ilalagay sa iodine mount? Okay? Because most likely, guys, what we have here are chocolates. Okay? Hindi ka guys sa form stool. Uy! Sorry. Okay? Hindi ka guys sa form stool na cyst ang pwede natin makita. So, Para mas maganda yung staining property, you can use iodine mounts. Okay? So, ayan. So, mix. 
you mix the sample with the saline or the iodine depending on the consistency. Okay, and then similarly, pick up small amount of the stool and mix with the drop of iodine. Okay, to prepare an iodine amount. Okay, so cover the drop of saline and the drop of iodine with a cover slip. Hold the cover slip at an angle. Touch the edge of the drop and lower gently onto the slide. Okay, so sabi dito, similarly, pick up a small amount of the stool and mix with the drop of iodine. So, di ba sinabi ko kanina, most likely hindi na yan tinaperform sa stool with mucose and loose water stool. Okay, but that will depend on the laboratory protocol. Okay. So, may mga hospital na ginagamit na lang siya ng iodine if that is in form stool or semi-form. But there are also hospitals wherein uh, they still do this one. Lalagyan pa rin nila yung with mucose or yung loose water ng iodine mount. Okay, and then you cover that with the cover slip. So guys, question. What uh, objective will you use? To identify or to search for parasites in a stool sample. Since ginamitan naman na siya ng cover slip. Anong gagamitin nyo guys? LPO, HPO, yung pinakamataas, yung pinakamataas na magnification. Oil ba? HPO ba? Or LPO? Okay, you will use the HPO. Yan yung highest magnification that you can use. Okay, why? Because guys, take note that, okay, this one, so it has, um, what, it is watery, okay, or it, it is a solution, okay, so hindi mo pwedeng gamitin dyan yung oil, okay, so you can use only yung uh, high power objective. So, in buffered methylene blue, you can proceed from step 1 to 5, okay, and then, but guys, instead of placing the, uh, instead of placing direct saline or iodine mounts, you use BMD, buffered metal in blue, on the slide. Okay, so wait for 5 to 10 minutes before examining to allow the stain to penetrate the trapezoids. So BMD will overstain the trapezoids in about 30 minutes. Therefore, you should also examine that within 30, uh, you should only examine it within 30 minutes after the preparation. Sorry guys, wala akong magagawa dun sa inay ng manok. Manok na pula. Okay, hindi ko nang pwedeng patay yung sakali. Examination. Put the slide with the mounts on the microscope stage. You use first the LPO, okay, before shifting to HPO. So, regulate the light in the microscope field with the substage, diaphragm. Okay, you should be able to see objects in the field distinctly. Too much or too little light is not good. Okay, so, hindi maganda yung sobrang malakas or mahina yung light. Examine the entire cover slip with the 10, um, the 10 times objective or the times 10 objective which is the LPO. Focus the objective on the top left hand corner and move the slide systematically backwards and forwards or up and down. So you stop, for example, this is um, the, they call this one. Um, this is the one that is seen under the microscope. So you start on this part, upper left, pwede pa up or down, okay, or pwede din naman sideways. I think we have it here. Okay, so actually we have it here. When organisms or suspicious materials are seen, switch to a high dry objective. Okay, so HPO. Kaya nga sinabi din niya dito, high dry objective. Why? Because mataas din naman yung objective. Okay, mataas din yung objective ni oil. But that is not dry because it uses oil. And increase the light by opening the substage diaphragm to observe a detailed morphology. So, either pa ganyan, or pa, up, and down. Okay? So, this is a systematic examination. So, this one, is, these are system, systemic examination. If mounts are examined in this way, in any of this way, any parasites present will usually found. If the mount is not examined systematically, parasites may be missed. 
Examine each microscope field carefully, focusing up and before moving to the next field. Okay. For others, kasi they only they will only check for ten fields. Okay. So random. But that is not systemic. Okay. Most likely, you will miss parasites using that method. Results and report for wet mouse procedure. So, it is important to determine the genus, okay, and species if possible. But for histolytica, I don't know if this, the reporting for histolytica depends on the laboratory protocol. But from the seminar that I attended um, back in 2018, uh, the speaker told us that for entamoeba histolytica, you should report that as entamoeba histolytica slash entamoeba dispar trophozoites. Okay? Because you cannot identify which is which. Okay? You cannot identify which is which. If that is histolytica or dispar. Because technically, guys, you can only differentiate them okay, using genetic methods like the PCR. Okay, but for you under the microscope, hindi mo siya ma-identify. That's why yun yung sinabi niya. Kailangan mo i-slash ng this part. Okay, so ingested cellular components such as RBC, WBC, yeast are reported in a semi-quantitative form as few, moderate, or many. So many RBC, few WBC. So that is the way to report the RBC or WBC. Chocolate laden crystals are also reported. Again, from what cells are these components? They are from eosinophil. And what uh, if eosinophil is present in the stool sample, it may indicate the presence of what? The presence of parasitic infection. Okay, good. So, we introduce the different uh, wait lang. With, um, guys, in uh, in the red cell lines here, you have to observe for the motility of trophozoites. Okay? So, hindi lang yung titig ng, ah, may trophozoite, but you also have to observe their motility. Okay? And that is for the cell line. In the direct smear iodine, you have to observe the nuclei of the cyst. Okay? Bakit hindi mo makikita ang trophozoites sa, ano, sa iodine mount? Because the trophozoites will be killed. Mamamatay sila under iodine smear okay? or iodine mount. Okay, sedimentation. We compare sedimentation and potation. When we say sedimentation, si parasite mag si sediment. So, kung magsisediment si parasite, where can you find the parasite? Or where will you find the parasite? on the upper part of the um, test tube or on the bottom. Okay, sa bottom, sa baba. Kasi magsisediment siya. Okay? So, the parasite has higher specific gravity than the reagent. So, magsising sila to the bottom of the preparation. That is for sedimentation technique. But for flotation technique, okay, so the parasite has lower specific gravity as compared to the reagent. So, magpo-float sila lalangoy sila sa taas. Okay? Mounts prepared from flotation techniques are cleaner than sedimentation techniques. Okay? So, what is the importance of concentration technique, guys? So, in cases of light infection, there's a need to recover more parasites. So, since that is light infection, mas konti yung makikita mong parasites sa stool. That's why you have to concentrate the parasite. Kaya gagamit ka ng stool concentration procedure. Okay? So, you can choose between sedimentation technique or flotation technique. Okay? So, materials. We have the FECT. So, you read on the materials. Materials. So, isotonic solution. Why do you have to use isotonic solution, guys? Bakit, ha bakit hindi hypotonic? Bakit hindi hypertonic? What will happen to the cell in hypotonic solution? It will disappear. Okay, bakit siya mag-disappear? Because it will burst. Unlike in hypertonic, what will happen? It will become smaller because it will shrink. Okay, very good. So, procedure. So, 
procedure, this is, I think, okay, since we see ether, this is FECP. Okay, so uh, with an applicator stick, you get 1 to 1.5 gram of pieces. Okay, and then you put that in 10 ml of formalin in centrifuge tube. Okay, so centrifuge tube, anong itsura nung bottom portion niya? Yun yung pavi. Okay, so meron din siyang ake. And steer to form a suspension. Okay, depende pala yun kung may pakip siya or wala. If that is the glass one or yung parang conical tube, yung may pakip. Uh, yeah. yeah, so strain the suspension through two layer surgical gauze. Kung baga, if you filter mo siya, Okay, you mix this 1.5, 1 to 1.5 gram of pieces to 10 ml, and then you mix it properly, okay, to form a suspension, and then you will filter it using two layer of surgical gauze, okay, into another centrifuge tube or into a small beaker, and then maglalagay ka ulit ng 10% formalin para mabuo siya ng 10 ml. Ma'am, 10 ml naman siya dati, tapos meron ka pang ilagay na, uh, na 1.5 gram. Okay? So, kailangan mo ulit buhin yun kasi nga, meron kang in-strain and meron kang tinapon. So, completuhin mo yung volume na 10 ml and then you will add 3 ml of ether or ethyl acetate to the suspension in the tube and mix well by putting a rubber stopper in the tube. Okay? Or if it has um, if, if it has a cup, better and Shaking vigorously for 10 seconds. Okay. So, ang hirap ng method na to because it's so disgusting. It's gross. Okay. So, yung tie, inimix mo. Tapos, sa formalin pa, sobrang baho. Tapos, i-strain mo pa siya. Okay. Diba? Sobrang iyo. Okay. But anyway, that is our job. So, okay, magmamedic, guys. Aside from... Magpaba yung sakod. Okay. Mabaho. So, remove the stopper. Magmed kayo. Okay. So, continue siya sa med. So, remove the stopper and place the tube in a centrifuge. Balance the tube. Send centrifuge out. 400 to 500 RPM for 2 to 3 minutes. And then, remove the tube. Siyempre, di ba? From the centrifuge. Gently loosen the plug. So, i-lulusin mo dito using an applicator stick. Okay? So, and then you will have there um, this one. So, si ether yung pinakamataas followed by the debris and then the formalin and lastly the sediment. So, uh, where can you find this par the parasite in FECP? formalin ether concentration technique sa my sediment, sa bottom part. Okay? So, hindi sa surface. Sa bottom. So, what will you do is that you, you pour off the top three layers in a single movement, allowing the tube to drain and work it for at least five seconds. Ma'am, hindi ba may tatapin yung sediment? Hindi po. Okay? mag lang siya dyan. So, itapon nyo siya. Itapon nyo yung tatlo. Yung formalin, yung debris, and ether. So, ilan dapat? Paano katagal? For, okay, for mga 5 seconds. Ibalik natin. Baka matapon yung sediment. Char! Okay. And then, you will get the sediment for examination. So, mix the fluid with the sediment using a disposable glass pipette. Transfer a drop to suspension in a slide for the examination. Okay. So, that is for the FECP. Examine the preparation in 10 times objective and you shift that to HPO. Okay? If you need for, you need to identify a parasite kung meron man. Examine in a systemic manner so that the entire cover slip area is observed. Okay? So, yung pa side or pwede up and down. Okay? So, again, we have here uh still sedimentation so yung mixture mo yung centrifuge pero ang daming kulang dito yung mixing and asa na yung tae di ba okay so again sa taas yung ether or ethyl acetate followed by fecal debris 
followed by formalin and lastly the sediment containing the parasite. So that ends our discussion for this part. Um, na dapat last week pa. But since, alam ko din naman, we're so busy and nadali din naman yung quiz natin. So we will have the quiz uh, this this week. Diba? Tama ba? Yes, tama. We'll have the quiz this week. So, wishing you all the best, guys. Kaya nyo to. Kaya natin to. Okay? So, God bless everyone.